I'm Tom French. I'm an assistant director within the Massachusetts Division of Fisheries and Wildlife. And uh, I'm responsible for Mass Wildlife's Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program. Rattlesnakes have always been here. On the other hand, they have not fared very well. It's one of our most imperiled uh, species in the state, and actually one, the one that has declined the most of any of our other listed species in, in modern time. They've uh, been persecuted at times. Uh, their habitat has been fragmented. Rattlesnakes undoubtedly are in deep peril in Massachusetts. Mass Wildlife's role in all of this is it is our mission, our statutory responsibility, uh, to restore and conserve all the biodiversity of this state. Our proposal to uh, release rattlesnakes on an island at Quabbin has evolved out of really the necessity of having at least one place in this state that's a safety net for rattlesnakes, a place that they can be, that they can be safe from people, not the other way around. People are doing just fine, but the snakes need a place that they can avoid people and the, the road mortality and the deliberate killing that's come from the, the public in the past. We have chosen uh, the largest of the islands at Quabbin, Mount Zion, for this project. Mount Zion is comparable in size to the habitat used by some of our other rattlesnake populations in the state. Um, so 1,300 acres and three and a half miles long. It provides some unusual and unique habitat features that rattlesnakes require. You, they have to have a very deep den site in order to survive our winters. Could they leave the island? Yeah, they're perfectly good swimmers. But if a snake were to swim off the island, uh, it would be unable to track itself back to the hibernation site. And it's too far to find another site like that, so it wouldn't make the winter. It would die over the winter. Our approach at Quabbin is going to be to take juvenile snakes that have either uh, been born in the wild at other Massachusetts sites and then head start them. Now, head starting is simply to keep them in captivity until they get big enough that they have a, a, high, a reasonably high survival rate. We're going to have to first get um, snakes to head start, juvenile snakes, um, and keep them for two winters. We've been head starting rattlesnakes in Massachusetts for three or four years already for two of our um, depleted populations. So we know the process. We've been doing it for Northern Red Belly Cooters, a federally endangered turtle for 32 years, very successfully. Um, and so we're not planning to do any releases this spring. We won't have anything to release this spring. So it won't really begin for another two or three years. The number of 150 rattlesnakes to be released on Quabbin uh, is a misquote of something that I said. The question was, how big is a healthy population of timber rattlesnakes? And my answer was, farther south, where rattlesnakes were doing just fine, the central Appalachians, Virginia, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, those populations may be as big as 150 animals. In Massachusetts, we probably, and it's hard to count rattlesnakes, but we probably have less than 200 in the entire state. So we won't have a source uh, for very many juvenile snakes to head start for release. Uh, I suspect we won't be able to get more than one to maybe 10 in a given year to release. So we're not gonna go out to Quabbin with a big bucket of rattlesnakes and dump 150 of them anywhere out there. That's just not happening. Timber rattlesnakes are a venomous species, and that's why we've been afraid of them for so long. Um, centuries ago, that made sense because there were really no treatments. Um, today, with modern antivenom treatments, uh, they're really not nearly as dangerous as, as they had been historically. Uh, but the reality is that hundreds of thousands of people visit our parks where we have our remaining rattlesnake populations, and they don't get bit. Their dogs don't get bit. Um, the people who rarely do get bit in this state are people that are illegally catching them or handling them or harassing them to photograph and none of those bites have been life-threatening. So people 
in the public have been safe, uh, but the snakes have suffered. We are uh, losing snakes faster in the last 30 years than we ever have before. We don't want on our watch for rattlesnakes to disappear nearly 400 years after the pilgrims first arrived.